Good morning and welcome to Begin in the Word. Our text today comes from Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 5 through 11. The Bible says, And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. We're continuing our study through the book of Hebrews. We are in the fifth section, the last part of that section, that provides for us warnings regarding our walk with Christ, how that Christ is better than the old law. And in this case of the fifth section, they're really more exhortations than they are warnings. And the exhortation is related to the idea of enduring. The great heroes of faith that we follow are watching us. Now we're engaged in this same struggle that they were living by faith, and we must endure. And as we saw last time, we closed with this statement that he makes in verse 4, In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. This statement is a little bit of an indication as to what the author believes is coming. He believes for these people in Jerusalem, the day is coming that they are going to resist to the point of shedding their blood. And I believe he's pointing to a statement that he makes later in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, in verse 7, where he says, Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God, consider the outcome of their way of life, and imitate their faith. Notice in that statement, which we will look at in a later episode, he says, Those who spoke, past tense to you, the word of God. I believe this letter was probably written right after the death of James, the elder of the, one of the elders in the church at Jerusalem. Church history tells us he was thrown off the temple and died. He was an elder in the church. The folks there looked to him and honored him as their elder, and he's telling them, remember what James and others went through, what they've gone through. You're going to go through the same thing. You haven't yet, but you will. And so because of that, he believes this discussion and this teaching about endurance is very important. And I believe that helps frame this discussion that's going on in chapter 12 for us. Well, the first phrase I want to notice is in the middle of our text where it says, it is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. The author wants us to understand this is a very loving statement that, or a very loving thing that's going on, that God is treating us as sons. Listen, life struggles may be the Lord working on you. We all talk about the Lord working in us, and he does, but the Lord also works on us. We need his help, and this whole teaching in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 is helping us to see that the Lord is going to work on us help change us and make us better. And when we endure, that's part of what we're enduring is that work that God is doing on us, God treating us as sons. I also believe that the author has at least in some measure a statement back in Psalms chapter 119, verse 65 through 72, uh, which we'll take just a moment and read that psalm. It is the teth part of the acrostic psalms says, you have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The insolent smear me with lies, but with my whole heart I keep your precepts. Their heart is unfeeling like fat, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. 
This author in Psalms understands that the things he suffered made him a better servant of God. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, he said. But now, he says, it is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. Well, this is mirrored in what the Hebrew author is telling us, that the things that we have to endure, the sufferings that we go through, are preparing us to be better servants of God. The elder that he's probably talking about, James, said in James, the first chapter, count it all joy when you enter into various trials. No, this endurance is not just so that God can see how tough we are. We're enduring things because God is making us better. Now, to the first part of the statement here in chapter 12, verse 5, and have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. This is a quote from the uh, Septuagint version of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline, nor be weary of his reproofs. For the Lord reproves him whom he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. Well, the first observation here is how that this what the Lord does for us in disciplining us. We have to endure it, and it can cause weariness. We can grow tired. Let me ask you this. Would you want to pay any other price for your faith? Would you want the price you pay for your faith to be any less? If faith is valuable to you, if the outcome of your life and the outcome of your faith has value, then certainly there must be a price to pay, and that price to pay will be weariness. You go through the struggles we go through, you're going to be weary. Or maybe you think that you're already perfected and you do not need the Lord's help. I hope not. No, we are broken people and we need the Lord's correction. We need his discipline to turn us into the followers that he wants us to be. And yeah, that's going to wear you out, that struggle you had with your sister, that challenge you have with your child, that problem you're having at work. All of these things connected to your faith, these are the things that you're enduring, and God sends them to you to make you better. Next observation we have here in this text, he says, my son, and the word that he used for love is the word agape. This endurance, this discipline that God sends to us is born of his affection. It's because he loves us. God loves us as his children and he is seeking to make us better, to improve us, to cause us to be better and more like him. And that doesn't come easy. Do you know of anything of value that comes easy? By definition, if it comes easy, it is of no value. No, something that's valuable comes at a great price. And that great price is the endurance that we must go through that the people at the church in Jerusalem were going to have to go through in order to be disciplined and a better follower of the Father. Then he gives to us an idea of the purpose in this quote that he offers from Proverbs, the purpose of this. And look at the words, discipline, reproved, chastise, reproof, reproof. These words all have to do with education. God is educating us. We think about the word discipline, and if you apply it to, say, the discipline of maybe some trade, you're a plumber or you're an electrician, you have to learn that discipline. There's training involved in that. It does not come easy. It's only on the other side of many years of training do you become disciplined in that skill. Well, that's what he's talking about here. Being a Christian is something that only happens on the other side of a disciplined education, and God is the schoolmaster. Through the things that we endure, he is teaching us every day. Through his reproofs, his rebukes, his chastisement, we are becoming better servants, more educated servants of his. Do not despise this endurance that you and I must go through. It is an act of God's love. This center section here, he says, for what son is there whom the father does not discipline? And he's going to offer to us a what you might call an earthly example. He offers an example of an illegitimate child and an example of a child that has a father that does discipline him. And I have two photographs here to help maybe understand this. On the left, a photograph of a father who has taken his son fishing. 
He's training him how to fish, do this, son, bait the hook that way, cast over here, cast over there, learn to be quiet. All the things he's teaching him how to be disciplined so he can be a good fisherman. In the meantime, showing his love and care and concern for that son. What a great image that is, a father teaching his son, disciplining his son so that his son can learn the skill, in this case, of fishing. The photograph on the right is a photograph that depicts to us an absent father. This young boy has a road to walk and he needs a father, but in his case, that father's gone. He is an illegitimate child. You and I understand the value that parents bring to children, in this case, fathers specifically. Homes without fathers struggle so much. Well, God wants us to share, not in fishing, or walking down a road, but he wants us to share in his holiness. He wants us to be special and unique like him. And that doesn't happen easy. That requires the discipline of God teaching us to become like him. Then finally, the last sentence. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. The idea is that there's a Peace that can only be found on the other side of pain. The words used in this text, it's painful for the moment, but there's a peace on the other side. There's a famous movie that uh, several years ago where the character who plays King Arthur says of an enemy that they must face, he says, there is a peace found only on the other side of war. And that is very similar to what this passage of Scripture is saying in Hebrews. There is a peace, the fruit of peace, that can only be found on the other side of pain on the other side of endurance. Listen, the lady can only celebrate the end of that race if she first ran the race. And there is an empty tomb found only on the other side of a cross. Listen, if you're enduring, if life is difficult, don't despise that. Rejoice in it. It's just a statement that God loves you and he is working on you, making you his own special child. Thanks for joining us today on Begin in the Word. I hope as you have begun today in the Word of God, you will live out today in the Word of God.